Greetings, I am Rob Chapman and today I'm going to teach you the solo from Door J's to survive. Not the whole solo because it's really, really long and it would take absolutely ages, but the part that I've been asked about by, by far and away the most is after the little drum break, there's a run and then the end of that solo. This contains a whole load of pretty advanced techniques and some really fast playing, uh, but I'm gonna teach it to you slowly. And I'm also gonna teach you some exercises within it that might be beneficial if you wanted to be faster at picking or playing. And by the way, being fast isn't the best thing about playing guitar. It's about being melodic and creating, but sometimes it's just fun to be fast. <laughs> And I, I have to admit, I'm guilty of just enjoying the feeling of speed, the need for speed. It's a Top Gun reference to people from my age group, of which there are very few of you, I think. Um, so yeah, the track is To Survive uh, from the album Centred and One by the band Dorje, who are releasing new music next year. And it's very exciting. What I'll do is I'll run through the solo uh, slowly for you so that you can see all the parts and kind of get to grips with it and then we'll start from the beginning lick by lick and I'll break it down and give you fret numbers and all that kind of good stuff <laughs> Lots of runs and patterns containing a number, and a lot of it is based on this uh, scale shape. Why don't we start with tuning? So at the moment, I am in E flat drop D. I'll give you some tuning notes. Using an ML1 Modern V2 from Chapman Guitars, a small British guitar company that I'm very fond of these past few 10 years. Um, swiftly become one of my favorite guitar companies and I recommend that you give them a try. Uh, that's Chapman Guitars from Chapman Guitars, uh, based in Brighton in the UK. And this was an ML1 Modern from the V2 range. So, Will, um, the backing track I'm going to uh, Give you a little link to this particular section so that you can download it and practice yourself and there's this little break in the drums that goes go, 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 go. and then a run starts and this is the beginning of the second half the reason i'm not teaching the first half is that it was all entirely improvised it's really complicated and complex and lots of little weird bends and over bends and it would take a long time to break it down and teach it. Like, and I haven't got a lot of time because I've got a baby on the way, uh, like this week. So anyway, here's the first run. <laughs> So we're, we're playing effectively a scale and we're breaking it down into one, two, three, four, five, six. And that is, uh, if we look at the fret positions, 11, 10, 9, I'm starting on the 8th fret on my A string. 
By the way, I'm referring to the strings as if they were tuned to standard, so E8, D, G, B, E. Otherwise, people get confused when you start saying, you know, C sharp, G, G. They go, but which string is that? So E, A, D, G, B, E. 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 I've had either not enough or too much of the black caffeinated goodness that governs my life and everything within it. So yeah, uh, 11, 10, 9, 8. I never talk about fret positions normally, so I find fret numbers difficult. Eighth fret, this is what I call a major shape, and we're gonna be going eight, 10, 12. Now this, I pick and I hammer, hammer. And then when I come down the string to do nine, 10, 12, I go pick, pick, pick. And that pattern repeats up the scale, so it's pick, hammer, hammer, pick, pick, pick. I stop, I reload, pick, hammer, hammer, pick, pick, pick. I stop, I reload, pick, hammer, hammer, pick, pick, pick. Stop, reload, pick, hammer, hammer, pick, 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 pick and bend. Don't forget to shift along a fret when you do this one. So this is a 9, 10, 12, and then 10, 12, 13. And it's tricky because I'm changing fingers as well as shifting along a semitone. So I've got my first, second, and little finger with a pick, hammer, hammer, but then when I slide up, I go first finger, third finger, little finger. Now, isolating that and turning it into a lesson would be a really good idea. So you could go. <laughs> Sounds boring, but boy, it will really work that muscle memory <laughs> and have you doing really good. And then the last one. And then there's a bend. So this is the 15th fret on the high E string and I'm bending it up a tone. And that's the end of phrase one. Congratulations if you can now play phrase one. I am proud of you. You have won your phrase one badge. To all my Dougie dads. It really helps. I've got a really itchy nose from pollen today. If you hold your plectrum like this. I know I'm out of focus. You know what I'll do? I'll give you a close up of how I hold my plectrum and that will probably really aid you. I'm pick slanting for the pick slanted initiated crowd of pick slanting fans. Uh, my, my pick is not square onto the strings, it is down at an angle. If it's square on, I don't think you'll be able to pick this fast. If you're angled, you'll slice true damn string like butter. It'll be, <laughs> I'm sorry, today is one of those days. <laughs> Uh, once you've achieved lick one and got your Dougie badge, and we've done the bend. Oh, this guitar sounds so good. <laughs> I'm plugged into a tiny blue Mesa Boogie amplifier, Mark 5 25 or something, and it sounds really nice. And on the floor, I've got the very thing from Snake Oil Effects, swiftly becoming my favorite effects brand. If you've not heard of Snake Oil Effects, I recommend you go check out Snake Oil, fine instruments. Um, I hear they're really good. And at the moment, I'm not using one. Adding in the very thing. <laughs> Phrase number two, let's become initiated, shall we? We've finished our bend. We pick that note again. We come down the scale, and then we're gonna do a trill. That's 12 to 13. And then we're gonna go 15th fret on the B string. Up to the E string 12. Back down to the 15B. And then finishing that part of the phrase on the 13th fret B string. Which sounds like this. I'll do that again for you from the bend. That happens again in the second part of the scale. So we come down. You hear it? It's the same thing. Trill. 12th fret G. Uh, down to 10th fret G. Up to the D string 12th fret. Flatten that finger down and get 12th fret uh, G string. And then first finger 10th fret G. For a bit of wiggle.
We delve into the depths of our guitars. Third fret on the A string. Fifth fret on the A string. Third fret on the D string. Fifth fret on the D string. And then I'm going to pre-bend. Return that bend. Uh, back to the third fret. And then fifth fret. And I'm going to squeal that fifth fret with the use of the very thing. Fort is a squeal box, if know the truth. And then I go. So that's from the fifth fret to the seventh. That's a pick and a slide. Fifth fret, G string, and then seventh fret, G string. That's phrase three. Rejoice if you just got that one under your belt. Connect all three. Grab a drink. See me here in two minutes. Let's do phrase four. <laughs> this is a repeating pattern lick in, in basically pentatonic, and it sounds like this. We are going to anchor ourselves on the fifth fret B string, and here is a series of patterns for you to repeat. This is a great exercise for hammer and pull, by the way. So five, six, five, seven, five, seven. That's the first phrase to repeat. It sounds like this. Now I am picking the very first note and the rest is hammered. So pick, hammer, pull, hammer, pull, hammer. Five, six, five, seven, five, seven. The second phrase, which is like the response if this was to be a call, goes from the E string, five, eight, five, six, five, seven. You see that? Five, eight, five, that's a hammer and a pull. Six, five, seven. So if you combine the two, you get this. And those two um, are really fun to play. When you get them right, you could take this concept and you could move it through the scale up the neck. I've never really experimented doing that, but, but I know you could. So. It's a really fun pattern to, um, to practice. That's the end of that particular phrase. Well done, you've earned your phrase four badge. Connect all four pieces and let's do phrase five. Phrase five is pretty simple. It's a lick that I do a lot of because I really enjoy its kind of neoclassical vibe that it does. Sliding as if from nowhere to the B string, 10th fret, I'm gonna play this cool neoclassical lick that I definitely stole from someone way better than me. And it goes pick, pluck, pick, pluck like this. So that's uh, 10, 10, B and E string, and then 10, 12, and then 10, 13, but then I shift the first finger to the 13th B string, and I get which, and that last night I bend it, so that you get this. Now, if you imagine coming from the previous phrase, you see how it kind of connects. So it's, again, this is a really good lick for turning into something that you can repeat, you can move around the fretboard. I'm just playing a scale. I mean, the one I've got here. You could play it all over. Uh... It's just lots of fun. So practice it and then try moving it. The final phrase, the end of level boss. And <laughs> this one is ridiculously fast and it's stupid that I made it that fast because as soon as I finished it, I have to start singing. And uh, going from a playing brain to a singing brain is, um, it's stupid and it's difficult. Anyway, 
it's the same scale shape that we did at the beginning of this solo, but played backwards, and it's the same pattern, it's the six pattern. So you go one, two, three, be still, very thin. One, two, three, four, five, six, reload, one, two, three, four, five, six, reload, one, two, three, four, five, six, reload, one, two, three, squeal. But it's all picked. There's no uh, hammer and pull. Um, just to make it sound a bit more percussive. So how do you build up to that? Well, you've got to have the right pick angle, uh, the right attack, hold the pick softly so that it slides over the strings like butter, and um, take it slowly and practice it in patterns of six. So that's what I would do. Just take it section by section. Picking pattern starts with a down, so I'm going down, up, down, up, down, up, and then I stop and I go down, up, down, up, down, up, stop, down, up, down, up, down, up, stop, down, up, down, up, down, up, squeal. And there's your pattern. One more time, here is the whole solo, nice and slow. See if you can play along once you've practiced a few times and really got it up to scratch. Good luck, take it easy. Chap us out and I'll be really proud if I can see some of you guys playing the solo. Take it easy, bye. I stopped, I started the camera gear because it's SLR and sometimes they turn themselves off.